This is part two of adding storage to a virtualized Solera. In the first step, we had added more storage to the simulator, and we had uh, configured the back end. It's the analogous to, to actually physically racking and stacking and plugging in the drives. And now we're actually going to present and use that storage to the Solera itself. This step here I'm doing here is just to, to give you a little bit of uh, a visual. It's not actually a required step. To just take a look at the uh, devices that are being presented to the actual Solera itself. If you take a look, there's a, a, a couple of LUNs and RAID groups that are seen but not actually configured. What we need to do here is we need to configure them. So if we log in here as NAS admin, and these tasks can all be done as NAS admin, not as root. So we log in as NAS admin, we make sure that the uh, NAS services start, if not just log out, wait a little bit and then restart, and type in this command, set up device config, um, server2 underscore uh, dash p dash s dash a. Um, and of course I fat fingered that, let's make it uh, server dev config, not setup dev config. The um, This step here uh, isn't again explicitly needed at this point. I'm just using it to show something. If you take a look, you'll notice that there's some devices that are missing here. For now, you know, don't worry about all the wording. Uh, what you could do here is you could reboot the data movers, or you can actually just reboot the Solera itself. So what we did is we just rebooted the whole Solera, um, and that's exactly what we're doing now. We're gonna shut everything down, and uh, I'll just time warp forward here to the point where the Solaris rebooted. Again, we could have just rebooted the data movers, and later on I'll show you how you can do that, but uh, sometimes it's just easier just to shut down and restart the whole Solaris sim. So, um, once the Solaris sim has been uh, rebooted, um, let's log in once again as NAS admin. And now, when we type in that same uh, command, the uh, server dev or device, um, and then the first argument is the data mover that you want to specify. So in this case, that's server2, uh, dash p, dash s, dash a, which lists all of the storage devices that are being used by the Solera. You'll notice that now it's detected. The data mover is now aware of the fact that there's these new back-end storage devices. Again, this is all totally virtual, of course. But you'll notice that they're marked as negative 99. That means that uh, they're, they're, it's aware of them, but they're not actually signed correctly. So then you just run the same command with the C as opposed to a P, and that goes through and discovers and signs all those new disk devices. So here, that's off what it's doing right now. And now let's issue the same command to the P with P just to list. And you'll notice that they're no longer dash 99. They'll now be listed correctly as uh, new disk devices. And now if we exit out of the command line and let's go back to Solera Manager, you'll see that those uh, uh, that additional capacity is now available to use for any purpose, whether it's iSCSI, NAS, or whatever. And by basically repeating these steps, you can add as much uh, storage as you want to the Solera SIM. Uh, making it a very, very powerful tool to uh, try out things, um, you know, and uh, uh, see everything that a real Solera can do. Again, it's not supported in production, and if you have any questions, you can go to forums.emc.com. Uh, you need to have a PowerLink login ID to do that, but anyone can get those. So if I expand this out and we now go to storage, previously you might recall that we had, you know, 5 gigs and then 19 gigs in the two storage pools, one in the RAID 4, uh, sorry, RAID 5, 4 plus 1, and then one in the RAID uh, 5, 8 plus 1 set. Now if we do a, uh, we take a look at the storage pools, <coughs> you'll see that, Yep, there's a whole bunch of additional capacity. And you'll notice that it got split because it got configured using the default template into the two uh, types of drive configs. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just show you how you remove drives. So first of all, you have to remove all the data that's on them, of course, um, which you can do via the Solera Manager GUI. Um, but then if you take a look at the disk devices, again, here you're going to need to specify which ones you want to remove. So you can see that there's a whole series of disk devices that we're leveraging for various uh, purposes.
and now what I'm going to do is uh, take a look at the actual back end. Um, uh, first of all, I'm going to go and become a super user because this step is like uh, requires you to have root privileges like it was when you added the storage in the first place. So if we go to this directory and we issue the uh, NAS raid command, and let's do a list. Here you can see a listing of all the disk devices. And you can see there's RAID, RAID group ID 12 and RAID group ID 13. And then they've got LUN IDs 26, 27, 28, and 29. And then there's also that hot spare. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say delete the hot spare. And again, this won't work unless, you know, uh, the in the case where you're actually using disk groups and other, that have data on them, you've got to remove the data that's on them in advance. And now let's go and actually delete um, the first uh, disk group. And now let's uh, remove the other disk group, which is our RAID 5 8 plus 1 disk group. And now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, uh, reboot the data movers. Incidentally, we could have done that as opposed to rebooting the actual VM itself um, um, in the earlier step where we're adding storage. Um, and interestingly, you'll note that rebooting a data mover here is actually a very, very fast operation. This is the you know window during which uh, you know you'd be failing over to the other data mover in a in an HA configuration. So we just rebooted the data mover. And now what we need to do is actually remove the enclosure that we configured in the first place. So this is how you do it. You run the setup clarion dash init command, finds the back end. You can see that they're all marked as UB or unbound because we unbound them in the previous step. We'll delete the existing enclosure, and then you exit, and you're done. You just successfully removed the storage that we had added in that previous step. So using these uh, two videos, you can see how to add and remove as much storage as you want from your Solera Sims. Have fun, and uh, thank you for being EMC and VMware customers.